Double post is the best play in Madden 24, and in this video, we're going to give you an entire offensive ebook running literally one play several different ways, and we're going to show you how to optimize the double post play. So this is in the Colts playbook. If you guys want to get my entire Colts offensive ebook, I believe this is also in the Eagles uh, playbook as well. It's completely updated on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Cody Ballard. You can sign up by clicking the link down in the description. It gets you access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks for Madden 24, and I really believe it's a great way to become a better Madden player. So if you're not in the Patreon, the link's going to be in the description uh, for you guys uh, to check that out. Now we're talking about double posts, and the reason I wanted to do this video is show you how you can literally just by changing little things about a play, you can make a play so much more than just one setup. You can create multiple setups from this play. And double post literally gives us, I, I would argue, the best stock routes of any play in Madden. The reason why, we have a crosser, we have a C route, we have a running back in route, we have a tight end wheel, and then we have this really unique post route that is actually a perfect post route. So uh, we're going to give you several setups in this video. The first one, the most basic setup of double post is to take the slot receiver and put him on a drag route. Now, the purpose of this is it's going to help us beat man coverage more consistently, and it's going to give us a high-low on the left, a high-low in the middle, and a high-low on the right. We'll show you what I'm talking about after we snap the ball. What you're going to see here is the post route will destroy man coverage in the middle of the field. And let's take a look at this in instant replay and just kind of break down the routes and the read progressions. So the, pretty much the first read that I always look to is the tight end. I always want to just kind of peek out there, see if I can throw that, that flat. In this example, uh, they have it manned up. So as I look over the middle, I have a mesh concept. This is a high-low in the middle of the field. What do I mean by high-low in the middle of the field? Well, we have the two drags over the middle of the field. That's the low. And then the, the post is going to be the high. So I can see it's man coverage. I can see that the three rec is going to take the drag, which might be the user in this case. And so I'm going to wait till he kind of commits to that drag route. And you see this window open up in the middle of the field to hit the post route. Now, the high-low in the middle of the field is actually working towards a high-low on the left and a high-low on the right. The high-low on the left is between the drag and the C route. In this example, the C route is coming open over there on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, that tight end is going to wheel up field. So if they were in zone, for example, I, might, I would have a high-low between the tight end wheel and the running back in route. So that's kind of the progression uh, on this play. And this is it's probably my favorite way uh, to run double post because of just it's, it's very simple and uh, it's very, very effective. OK, so we'll keep looking at this against man. Uh, you'll see here one of the things I want to quickly point out about the C route. I've noticed in practice mode, the C route is going to win uh, basically one every uh, basically 50 uh, percent of the time. If you smart route the C route, you'll see that it'll go a little bit deeper and you see he does beat me in uh, slightly more effectively. So that is something that you can do, just a little tweak. Uh, but another thing that you can do, let's say that the C route is bagged. All you have to do is just click on to the receiver and aggressive catch it. And it really typically, especially if you have gift wrap, a lot of times it'll catch it. Um, but I have not seen it get intercepted. Um, so anyways, just kind of look at the, the C route on the left side. I, I noticed that it's probably between 50 and 70% of the time it's going to be consistent against main coverage. It's not as consistent as like the corner strike C route out of, out of that. Even the hot route master C route, I feel like uh, the hot route master C route is kind of underrated this year. A lot of people aren't using it. But anyways, just for, for the sake of the video, uh, we're going to leave it at that as far as the C route against man coverage. You can throw it if, if it's covered, um, but a lot of times it does beat man coverage. Okay, uh, let's keep going. And looking at the rest of the routes, so the rest of the routes against man coverage, the running back uh, in route is really good at beating man-to-man -man coverage. I'm going to leave it at that. The running back in route is really good at beating man-to-man -man coverage. And then the other thing that's really underrated about this play is let's say that they start to shade their coverage up or they just kind of start to play a little bit more soft. This drag is a very underrated read. Okay. If you can make that read consistently, that drag is very helpful for not only completing the high low against zone coverage, but now we can attack man coverage on both sidelines. And then we can also attack man coverage in the middle with our post route. Let's talk about the setup against zone coverage. So the setup against zone coverage, if you take a look here, this is going to be cover. I'm going to run a couple different zones. This one is cover for drop. And please notice that the safeties are not going to play the post. This is one of the real reasons why I think this is the best play in the game because this post is a little bit unique in the fact that it kind of goes out wide and then it sharply cuts under the safety. So you see here, it kind of gets itself in this real soft spot 
of the defense. And with set feet lead, you are able to pass this ball in um, very, very easily. So the only real ability that you need for this offense is set feet lead, which is why the Colts playbook has been the best playbook in the game pretty much since the beginning. It's been very, very high level meta. A lot of people are using it because of the fact that you have this play. Now, that being said, uh, let's talk about some of the other reads in terms of how they're going to play against zone. If the yellow zones go to the post, then you have that high low in the middle of the field where you can typically, typically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking down to our running back. Now, I did want to also address the C route on the left side. The C route on the left side is one of the most, I think, the highest level read on this play. And if you look at this quote closely, this C route is different than a hot run master C route. It is also different than the corner strike C route that you might see in like West Coast Bunch, for example. The main difference is this C route is shorter and sharper. So because it's shorter and sharper, let's say a cover four defense, the outside quarter defender, even if they have a deep out zone knockout, he's not going to be able to typically light up against that. So um, another common adjustment out of main coverage, a lot of people like to put an outside third here. Uh, please notice I'm throwing this right at the outside third with match on and I'm completing it. The reason why is because I'm pass leading it outside and I'm throwing it right on the cut before that defender can get a light, uh, a knockout animation. So I really, uh, really would suggest that. And then the way they're going to stop that is they're going to have to go with a cloud flat or a curl flat on the left. That's the zone that's going to be able to stop that. So if they're not cloud flatting or they're not curl flatting on the solo wide receiver side, we're going to be able to throw this C route. So if they are curl flatting, then what we want to look at here is typically this drag route on the sideline is going to get underneath of a cloud flat. So again, that's kind of the purpose of that drag route. So that's the first setup of a double post. I want to get into the second setup of double posts, which is a very, very good against cover three. It's actually a one play touchdown against cover three. And all we're going to do is streak the slot receiver and we're going to snap the ball. Now, what this is going to do is it's just going to capitalize on this post route. And as you can see, if I wait on this against cover three, I've got a big play, if not a one play touchdown against the cover three coverage. The reason this is also why we want to run this with our bunch, uh, this specific setup for sure with your bunch to the wide side of the field. And then the other thing that you have here is you're going to have a little bit more of a high low to the right side of the screen. You're still going to have a high low in the middle, still going to have a high low on the right. Now the C route is, is a little bit more isolated. So as you'll see here again, just wait on this route. And this just absolutely crucifies people in head to head that want to just sit and stock cover three. This is a very, very, very good setup. So if you think about one of the most common adjustments that people like to do against bunch, a lot of people like to do something like what you're seeing on my screen. They like to put the outside third defender on the left-hand side of the screen, which will match and will play pretty well against that receiver on a lot of different routes. However, when you have this setup right here, as long as we don't get bumped as we just did, when we, when we have this setup right here, what you're going to notice a lot of times is, and I'm not actually just going to back up the slot. And the main reason I'm doing that is just to kind of try to show the, the concept. Uh, but basically, as long as we don't get bumped, this circle receiver has a really good chance to be able to, eh, he's not going to beat man coverage as well. But right on the, he's not going to get a one-point touchdown if they have him manned up. But it, he is going to beat man coverage to the inside. And I'll, I'll, I'll show that real quick here. So again, we're just going to drop the zones, and this doesn't matter if we're pressed or not. But what you'll see is when circle cuts inside, you see right there, I'm able to throw that consistently. I don't ever really have to worry about the middle third safety. Let's talk about cover four real quick with this setup. So uh, one of the things that you want to do against cover four with this setup, you always want to be looking at that post route. So what you'll see right here, see how that inside quarter is basically the streak is clearing out both of the inside quarters. And this is what is really unique about double post. If you have time in the pocket, this post route is lethal against things like cover four drop. So what you'll see here, if I actually just wait on this, I can get a same kind of result I was getting out of cover three. And if I get, you know, a couple jukes, I'm going to have a touchdown, really, really big play potential against cover four. So if you think about both of those situations and really cover two as well, we'll come back to cover two in just a minute. What are they going to have to do with their user? Well, they're going to have to go user the post route. So because they have to go user the post route, it leaves them vulnerable to a lot of the things that we're going to do underneath. This is where that high low in the middle field, they go to the user of the post. I'm going to check down to the running back right in that little middle area. 
of the field. The other thing is, let's say we get a cover two. So cover two, one of the things that's really good about the mid read is the mid read can play this post. Let's say I was back in that original setup. I want you to watch the mid read zone. You're going to see that the mid read zone is going to match that post and he's going to actually be able to take that away. So what we're going to do to kind of counter that adjustment is we are going to streak the slot receiver by streaking the slot receiver where everything's going to be exactly the same defensively. What you're going to notice is that mid read is now going to have to respect the streak and we can throw this underneath it for a big play against cover two. This also really matters in terms of like uh, double Mabel. So a lot of people like to run double Mabel. That's essentially two hard flats. They're going to drop this guy in a third. And then typically this guy will be in the middle of the field. Now this guy is a middle of the field user. Who's he going to have to guard? He's going to have to guard the double post post route. So because he's going to have to guard the double post post route, the tight end curl flat zones will match a tight end wheel. So what you can do here late in the play is you can throw this in route and you see how big and how much little underneath space we have for this play to become a very, very effective passing play. So this is the second setup of double post. All we're doing is we're streaking the slot receiver. Now, uh, what we're going to do for the third setup of double post is we are going to streak the running back. We're going to motion him into the slot. We're still going to streak the slot receiver, and then we're going to drag the tight end. Now, the purpose of this is we're going to really capitalize on this C route on the left-hand side. And the main reason we're going to be doing this is because we're either A, getting a lot of man coverage, or B, we're getting a lot of this cover three style uh, where they're putting the outside third on the left-hand side. If they're doing that, this is a great route combination for that defense. What you're going to see is that running back is always going to clear out that outside third. And essentially what we have here is a high-low read on the left side. It's creating essentially a makeshift kind of sale concept and actually a really, really good one because the sale concept that also has the capability, uh, as you'll see right here, to be able to beat man coverage. Again, if they don't win, what are you doing? You're going to ag catch it. Um, I really think this ag catch is super, super underrated. It's actually really consistent for me. Um, but a lot of times he will win. So you see here, doesn't win. Guess what we do? We ag catch with gift wrapped. A lot of times you catch that. They have to have a KO. So that's how we're going to be able to attack that. Now let's say, for example, probably the best thing they can do is call cover three. So the best thing they can do is call stock cover three with cut with uh, curl flats. Obviously you don't want to do that against this play too much because it's a touchdown, right? It's a touchdown against a lot of setups, but what you'll see here as I get absolutely hummed at by a send three out of three, three normal, which is absolutely crazy. Um, the randomness of practice mode. What you'll see here though, is if they, if the curl flat goes back to defend that, that corner route, on the left or that C route, you're going to see that this tight end is going to come right underneath and we can check down to him for about 10 to 15 yards. So super, super simple little check down there. That's going to be really effective uh, specifically against, you know, kind of some of the meta that people are going to try to employ to defend this. So how do we, how do they stop this? Right? Well, the best tactic that they can use is a cover two cloud, but look at that running back, pull that vertical hook out of that, out of that zone. And so we can now, you know, check down to the tight end. The tight end is essentially the check down. Let's say they go double flat. So let's say they go with a little defensive coverage, uh, basically like this. And they're trying to defend, you know, everything we're able to do here on the left-hand side. Part of the challenge that is they have to respect the, they have to respect seam streaks on both sides. So if that linebacker on the left side, if he goes to the hard flat to defend the tight end, You'll see right here, we can throw this with an inside pass lead, and we have a seam streak to our running back. One of the other little glitchy adjustments I want to chat, I want to give to you guys, you might not be able to do this if you don't have outside apprentice or hot route master, but I wanted to make this available to you. The way that they stop the double post uh, C route is with a pressed cloud flat. The way that we can counter that is by putting a hot route master C route out there. And the reason that this would be beneficial is because it's going to get over the top of a press cloud. So you see right here, the running back will be a clear out route. They go with the press cloud. All we got to do is freeform that up into the outside. And as you can see, it's able to attack this very um, you know difficult coverage to beat on that left-hand side specifically. So as you think this all through, what might they have to do? What they probably are going to have to do to slow down some of the things that we're going to be doing on the solo wide receiver side 
um, is they're going to have to drop some zone drops. Now, this is a really, really, really important part of the video. So hopefully you're still watching this and uh, I want to really get into this. So uh, the basic idea here is, like I said, they're going to have to play some zone drops. So because they're going to have to play some zone drops, obviously it's going to open up some other things in our route progressions and combos. But I did want to quickly point out the double post C route is shorter than a standard C route. So let's go back through this exact setup. And I want you to look here on the left-hand side. You can throw this underneath a 30-yard cloud. So they can't utilize a 30-yard cloud to consistently stop that double post C route. They're going to have to use something more so like a 20-yard cloud. Okay, so because they're going to have to use a 20 yard cloud, and this is why um, I think Hot Route Master or just even an outside apprentice in general is really important, even though it's not the most important ability. Set feet lead 100% the most important ability until we can get set feet lead and Hot Route Master, you got to prioritize set feet lead. Okay, but what I want to show you is if I put the Hot Route Master C route out here, this route is deeper and he's got a little bit, he actually doesn't get over the top, but look what we can do. We can now check down to that post route over the middle. Okay, so. Kind of keep that in mind. They're going to have to drop their zone drops to about 20. Now, what is a, a, a 20 yard cloud obviously is going to leave them vulnerable uh, to some other, to some other stuff that we can do to them defensively or uh, offensively. So if they're running 20 yard, 20 yard cloud flats and they give you a look like, like this right here, then what you need to understand is, guess what? Their 20 yard cloud flat on the right side of the screen can't defend a corner route. So that's where we would go to maybe maybe um, a slot apprentice style of setup. This would be an example where we might wanna go to a slot apprentice style of setup where we actually use you know, something like this to the right side of the screen. And what you're gonna see here is because it's not able to go back to 30 yards, this becomes a wide open dot against the defense. So obviously you could go to like curl flat or corner out dig if you wanted to do that as well. Uh, but I did want to, I, I kind of want to just for the fun of the video, stay in double post because there's so many things we can do out of this one little play. Okay. So, so far we've given you a couple setups. Now we're going to get into one of my other favorite setups. Um, and it's this one right here. What the reason uh, for this setup is whenever you're flooding uh, a side of zone, a lot of times people understand defensively that the most meta way to flood zone coverage is to do that from a short side, uh, to do that from short side. So for example, if I was to run a street corner flat here to the right, I would want to run this to the short side of the field because that, um, hope, hopefully they don't run into each other as bad as they did right there, but essentially the quarter will go to the deep zone and I could throw the, the, the route underneath it. So what people a lot of times will do, and this is what I would do, is you know they might do a defense that looks like this um, to try to stop this because to the wide side of the field, which is to the left in this example, that um, to the wide side of the field, that that third a lot of times can play the C route, and, and we'll explain. I'm going to put the running back on a streak, and then we'll go streak corner flat just to kind of explain this. So if you look to the left-hand side here, you're going to see the C route get bagged by the third. Like if that's a KO, a click on, that can be defended. But what's really unique about Bunch and one of the unique opportunities that we have uh, by having this formation and by having just the alignment, everything that's all, everything that's included in all this is what we can do with our running back when we have a look like uh, what you see here on your screen. So again, they're going to be, you know, probably dropping some zones, dropping some, some, some coverage. And what we can do is we can put the running back on a wheel route. And then from there, you can kind of do a couple of different things with your backside. Uh, one of the easiest setups here is to streak and drag. Um, and th this is essentially the same setup that it would have been if the running back had been in the slot. But now the running back is in the backfield. And the beauty of this is we can do this while still having the threat of the bunch side flood on the same alignment. So they have to respect your bunch side flood and they also now have to respect your wide side wheel route that's gonna clear out any third or quarter and you're gonna be able to throw that C route. I think this combo right here, for those of you that stayed till uh, this long in the video, I think you're getting an absolute gem uh, of a route combination. And the reason I think that is because I find that this combo right here is the most difficult combo for most people to defend. And the reason why is because they uh, a quarter is not gonna defend it. As you see right there, I'm able to throw it. The other reason why this is super valuable is because let's say they run like just a basic cover three. 
the basic cover three, the curl flat defender, he's not going to get out there enough. So you see here's curl flat. See how uh, I can still throw this on a curl flat defender. And then let's talk about man-to-man -man coverage for a second. So let's say they do run some man coverage on you. Running back wheel routes, when they uh, are called against man coverage, you're going to see I can lob it up and over the top, and we can actually get a big play. So, And then last but not least, if they are playing the – the press, the press third where they play man coverage, but then they put that solo wide receiver corner in a third. Then what we're going to be able to do here, you're going to see, we're going to be able to throw, if I would have had time, he seems wide open over there on the left-hand side, but you're going to be able to throw this, uh, this route. One thing you can do if you want to give yourself a little bit more time, put your tight end on a block and release drag. Um, that'll just give you a little bit more time to throw this route because it does take a little bit of time to develop. So as you can see, this is one of the better setups out of this. Um, I did want to jump back out into uh, some zone drops here to kind of break this down against uh, zone drops. So first of all, we'll start with 20s and 5s, and then uh, and then we'll get into maybe if they do like a 30. So if they are doing 20s and 5s and they are doing the back off stuff, this is um, this is obviously the most common because this was what stopped them. This is what stopped it short side. So why not do it wide side, right? Well, what you'll see here is we have some different opportunities here. So you'll see you can actually, I wasn't able to catch it there. You can actually kind of user catch this against double Mabel. Okay. Um, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a thing to user catch this, but just keep this in mind, like understand the running, the cloud flat will respect the running back wheel. The cloud flat will typically respect the running back wheel. So you see how, and then I can click on and go make a play. Now, another thing that's actually really, really underrated about what we just showed you is let's say that they are uh, using their zone drops, you know, and they're kind of playing some defense and they're basically running a defense like this. If they go to the right side of the screen, meaning they don't worry about the running back, they kind of leave him up to the zone drops. The, the running back, watch him get right up in the seam area of this defense, and you can actually throw that because why? The C route is having to be respected by the outside defenders. So it does kind of depend a little bit on how they're setting up their cloud flats. Um, but in, in general, they're going to have to worry about this right side. So I want to show you practically what it might look like for them to worry about the right side. For them to worry about the right side, it might mean they use or the running back. And if they do that, then what you have on this play is the double post post route yet again. The streak clears it out. This is wide open, and you might have a flat-out touchdown on this play. Super, super effective. Now, one of the things that we have to talk about when we're talking about double post, and I think just a setup in general that is very valuable, is a setup that is very effective against man-to-man. -man. So how we want to beat man coverage here is we are going to put our uh, slot receiver on a little zig route, and then we're going to put our running back on a Texas route. And you can leave the tight end on this wheel, or you could block him. That's kind of up to you if you want to. You could also drag him um, if you want. We're just going to block him. And what you're going to see is four out of the uh, – at least three, if not four out of the five routes are going to be able to beat man coverage. So the first and foremost, you have your C route. Never want to forget that. You always want to kind of peek over there, see if you have the C route. The second thing that you have is, of course, you have your double post post route right on the cut. Possession catch that. I think possession catching really helps against KOs this year. And then let's say they're, you know, maybe doing some adjustments to try to to try to defend that, to try to defend some of those things that we just showed you. Then what you're going to be able to do here is you're going to be able to either hit your zig or you're going to be able to hit your running back on that Texas pattern. The running back Texas pattern is one of the better routes in this game for attacking man coverage. The only thing that you can't uh, really attack with the running back Texas is you can't beat a three wreck. If they do have a three wreck, that's a thing. Uh, most people playing man coverage are not going to utilize a three wreck to get stops. They're going to try to use their user. The problem with using your user against a running back Texas pattern is guess what else we have? We have the double post post route. Um, the zig route as well, pass lead outside. The tight end's going to lead block for you up the field. Very nice little route um, as well against man coverage. One thing, like I said, is if you want to, go ahead and block your tight end. But your tight end on a wheel route um, you know, can actually do some cool stuff for you as a clear out on the, on the right-hand side. 
So that's another setup that's really good. It's specific. It's a little bit more specific to man coverage. And if someone's running a lot of man coverage on you, it's going to be a really, really, really good setup. Uh, I want to give you one other setup that I really like against man coverage. And I think it's one of the most underrated setups of double post. I don't see a lot of people talking about it, but I do think it's one of the better setups in the game. What we're going to do is we're going to streak our slot receiver. We're going to drag our solo wide receiver and we're going to wheel our running back. The purpose of this, it's going to be really good against man and zone. And it's essentially a high low in the middle of the field between the post and the drag, but we're using wheel routes on the outsides of the of the formation to be able to give us some really cool options against uh, against zone coverage. So if you do get man coverage, please look to your running back on the wheel route. We talked about that a second ago, but um, running backs on wheel routes, really good against just a basic man coverage. If someone's running very vanilla uh, man coverage, this is a really, really, really great way to be able to attack it. Now, also, what do you have uh, against man coverage? You have your double post post route, super valuable, very good route against man to man coverage. One thing I didn't, I actually failed to mention that I did want to quickly point out is if they want to stop the running back route, typically you're going to get something, um, you know, you might get like a third and then it, it, again, it's kind of like, you know, you know, everyone defends, everyone defends bunch a little different. Um, but what I want to show you is this this uh, streak to the slot receiver is one of the most slept on routes in the game. So you'll see right here, see how he kind of gets this inside leverage. I could actually throw that. Now I have the post, it's a little bit more open than the streak was, but just kind of keep that in mind. If they're playing cover zero, especially if they're playing like a cover zero pressure and you have time in the pocket just for like a second, you can actually uh, take the top off the defense with this streak. So you see here, we're just going to lob it up. And we're able to get a pretty big play against cover zero man coverage. So kind of just keep some, something to keep in mind. Um, and then the other thing that I want to show you is let's say that they kind of commit with their user defender to uh, taking the double post, uh, the double post route. So the way that would practically look, I'm going to use this double post route. And then, you know, maybe they're running this, these adjustments. This is actually a really, really common way that people like to defend bunch this year. And what you're going to notice is this uh, wheel route will pull the third and we can check down to this drag right underneath. I think it's one of the more uh, helpful ways to attack things like double Mabel as well, which we're going to show you right here, because if they are attacking double Mabel, we have a high low in the middle of the field. And what that high low is going to allow us uh, to be able to do is the high low is going to allow us to basically check down to this drag. So what you're going to see is the running back will will pull the flat on the left, the tight end will will pull the flat on the right, and then the drag will come underneath of it. Um, and of course, I forgot to put the guy on the drag, so I had to throw the post route. Let me show you that real quick one more time. And again, this is just the double Mabel. So even if they have a vertical hook, even if they even if they have a vert hook on the field, uh, it's important to show that you can still hit this. So the vertical hook, if you think about it, it's either going to match the streak to R1, it's going to go vertical to the circle receiver, or it's going to uh, funnel wide uh, to the tight end. So you see here, it kind of gets caught in the sauce, and then you can check it down to your little drag route. I think this is such a very underrated route combo. Um, there's so many more route combos I could show you out of double post, uh, but I think this is you know plenty. These, you literally can run your entire offense from one play with this. And that is how powerful double post is. If you guys want a full breakdown of the entire offensive ebook out of the Colts playbook, make sure that you join the Patreon. It's only $10 to sign up. If you enjoyed these breakdowns, I guarantee you, you're going to love the Patreon. We go super in depth and we actually explain not only um, how to run the plays, but how to come up with your own concepts as well uh, to be able to become a better Madden player. Thanks for watching the video and to sign up for the Patreon, head down to the description and click the link down below.